Today's video is primarily an instructional video for those who purchased my layered toy tractor kit. Thank you very much. Um, this video is for you. I'm going to be going through step by step on how to put this thing together. Hopefully you found the PDF link in your Etsy invoice. You can also find the Etsy PDF uh, in the link provided below. Um, and go ahead and print that out or keep it up on a PDF reader like on a laptop or something. Before you get started, I recommend you go ahead and separate and lay out all your parts as shown. Uh, first of all, we've got uh, layers of your tractor body. Uh, so we've got A is the central layer, and everything that goes to the left of A is normal lettering. So you got D here, it's actually your fourth layer. Uh, some layers have two parts like C1, and C2, so they're both on the C layer, but they're they're numbered one and two. Uh, just like B here, this is, uh, sorry, that's A. So this is like the part of the A layer, part of the A layer. So everything that's to the left of the A layer, which is your central layer, is gonna go in one pile. And everything to the right of the A so is gonna be over here. And these are marked with backwards lettering. Let me flip it upside down. Oops. Anyway, um, so this is backwards lettering. Everything that is to the right of the central layer. All right, so stack all that up in uh, the proper order of their layer. And then do the same over here on the uh, everything left of the A central layer uh, is going to be the right side letter. So you got your tractor layers grouped left and right. Then go ahead and lay out everything that goes to your steering assembly. And these are your front wheel hubs and axle. These are your front wheels, everything labeled with Q. Some things will not have a label just because they're too small, but they're easy to identify. And then you've got your R parts, which are part of your steering assembly. Uh, they'll need to go in their own category, except for this R part. That's the uh, that's the trailer hitch. Uh, also unlabeled is the uh, radiator fan, steering wheel, and clutch pedal. You've got your X pieces. Three X pieces make up your rear axle. And then over here you've got your rear axle actual. So all these will layer together to make the uh, rear axle assembly. Uh, this here are the hubs. For the rear tires, of course you got your rear tires up here. All these are labeled T. Um, so you've got your right side T's and your backwards T's. We'll have to go into exactly how to assemble the tires because you can't, the, the tires right and left are not interchangeable. Uh, so I'll get into that in depth. Over here you got these uh, alignment dowels. You got four sizes. You got one that's really long. It goes uh, through the back axle you got two that are longer that go here and then you got two that are shorter that I each go here and here uh, I'll show you here over here and then you got these short ones which go up here and uh, assemble the fender so let's put everything away and get started with the body we're going to do the uh, the left side of the center first and uh, let's go ahead and get started so now I've got in front of me layers A through F and reverse B through D. And uh, I've also got the three different sizes of dowels. I moved the four short dowels off to the side. We're not gonna need those until later. But uh, the first thing we're gonna start with is adding the dowels to our center layer. And we're gonna blow right through this here. All right. So you're gonna take the long dowel, which is marked with a single black, uh, black line. We're gonna thread that through the rear, uh, the rear of layer A, about halfway, and then we're going to take the two longer ones and thread them through the ones that are in the middle, 
closest together. Same deal, about halfway. Okay, and then we got one more that goes in the front. Again, halfway. So we got the single mark dowel, the double mark dowel, and the triple mark dowel. Then we're going to take the other, the second triple mark dowel, and put it through the uh, other part of layer A. About halfway. Okay, and then we're just going to start stacking. Uh, and then we need to apply glue in between. You don't need a whole lot of glue, but you do want to make sure you uh, get glue on all the contact parts. So you have to kind of look ahead uh, where you're going to add glue, because not every uh, layer lines up exactly level with the one that you're adding to it. So we're just going to go ahead and start adding glue on all the main parts. Try to get a good coverage around the entire border. You want to avoid getting glue on your dowels. You want to keep those loose. Okay, and then maybe just get a little bit in the center. And then slide her on. Okay, you don't really need you don't really need squeeze clamps for every layer, but if you use them at your will. It doesn't take a whole lot of time for super glue to set up, but uh, anyway. Okay, that's that. I'm go ahead and add the B layer to the front. So the squeeze clamps are good, so you can move on to the next part of your project. It's really important to make sure your parts line up where it's obvious that they're supposed to line up. And you can do that just by running your finger along the edges. Okay, while we got this, we'll go ahead and move on to the C layer on the front. And by the time you're done working with one part, you're able to go back and work on the next part. All right, so this is where I need to make sure I know where the C and the D are going to make contact so I don't get too much glue. Keeping control of where your glue goes makes a nice clean model.
Now obviously you're going to want to watch out for your thin bits because those are going to be a lot more fragile. Now as soon as we got the D layer on, we can now add the front end of our A, B, and C layers. Again, make sure your parts all line up. Up here, you're not gonna get so much alignment because you're starting to get the contour of the hood come through. Okay, we're gonna continue on with F and E, or E and F rather. So I got some extra glue on the inside of where the armrest is. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, being able to pay attention to where the contact points are between the layers. So now I got a couple glue streaks there that is not going to be holding anything. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, get the F layer on. This way. So now the G layer is in two parts. I don't actually have it labeled G1 and G2, but you can see where they go. Now the G layer is the first part where we actually need clamps because we're going to be uh, bending it as we glue it in. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what that means right now. All right, so uh, I want you to notice that the G layer or the actual G is printed on the inside of of the, uh, of the layer, because we're gonna be flipping it backwards, and it'll be facing the inside, so we never see the G on the outside of the model. We're working with the outside of the model here. All right, so what's gonna happen is we're going to slide it on here, and you see there's a gap here between the F layer and the G layer, and we're gonna be squeezing it into the L layer and letting that dry. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. You don't need so much glue right here, but you do right around the dowel holes and on the tip. Okay. You don't want to get it in the dowel hole. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add Squeeze clamp to the back seat, back of the seat, and around the back axle. Now look here, there's a gap between the L and the G layer, and it connects here between the G and the F layer. Okay, so we're going to clamp up top here, and then we're going to add a squeeze clamp right there. Squeeze that all the way to the L layer. In fact, we'll move this one on up. So we want to get the 
G layer and the L layer fully in contact right here. So we've got a bend of this G layer. And you probably want to give that the full cure time. Maybe go away and get some lunch or check your email or something. So this is where patience comes in. We can actually go ahead and add the, the front end of the G because that won't have any pressure on it. Again, this is backwards or flipped reverse. So the G is on the inside of the layer. Now we're going to go ahead and let that set up for a while and then uh, we'll come right back and move on. Now while we wait, we can go ahead and start setting up our other side of the layers. So over here we've got the backwards facing letters. Um, so starting with B1, because we've only got the A uh, already assembled, so we got B1 and B2 goes here. Uh, here's C1 and C2, D, E, F, and then here's G on the opposite side. It's going to go inward, and then we've got an H that goes there. Um, so go ahead and look over your parts. I want to point out that, you know, this is, this is, uh, three millimeter uh, plywood. Uh, so being, being that it's plywood, it's relatively uh, stable and um, uh, strong, it strengthens itself. Uh, but there are parts here, like you see right here, where the wood gets really thin and that's gonna be really fragile. And it's possible that this could break in shipping. Um, I don't want that to discourage you, however, because uh, even though it may be broken and maybe broken completely in two, uh, you can still assemble this as two parts. Um, you just might have a little, little crack in the finished model, but you probably won't notice it. Like, like in this one, uh, that's a break right there. No, right here. See, these actually both broke. Um, I actually did a little redesign on this to give it a little, um, a little extra meat. Maybe you can see that there, but uh, that should be stronger now and it shouldn't break so easily. But like I said, if it breaks, it's not a big deal. Uh, just go ahead and assemble it, uh, assemble it as is. You've got the uh, registration dowel holes to go ahead and realign it. It shouldn't be a problem. Also, um, you can hear my dog walking in the background with his long nails. I think he wants to go outside. Let me go ahead and... Well, Mickey loves to get the foot game. And while we're on the topic of faults and the parts, uh, I need you to understand that wood has but one aspiration in its life, and that is to be a potato chip. These start out flat, but over time they warp up and turn into what you get in a potato chip. So with that being said, um, if you get a piece that is warped, then it's, uh, it's okay. It's still okay because... Oh, I got a message because when you start uh, adding more plies to these, it's going to level out and it's all going to balance itself out. So if it's, so if you got a piece that's a little too warped in your opinion, it's probably okay. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the build. Okay, this has been drying long enough, so we'll go ahead and pull the clamps off. Set them over here. So as a recap, we have gone through A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which was, um, was it G? Yeah, it was G that we had to pull
hold the clamps down tight against the L layer. And we've also got the uh, front end of G on, and this is the uh, exterior minus, we just have to put on the H. Um, that kind of frames up the engine block. So uh, before I do that, I want to show you what we've accomplished with the squeeze. Okay, hopefully you can see that um, how this piece goes down and then it bends inward and then back out. So it gives it kind of an interesting contour. It's not just all flat, uh, uh, all flat construction. So we've got uh, this piece glued in here. You may need to add extra glue just to make sure that sets up. Give it enough time for the super glue to really set up properly. And uh, like I said before, uh, this is where it requires patience. So let's go ahead and put on the H piece now. This is on the inside and it's going to go on just like so. We're going to add glue to the contact points which are here and here. You'll also see that because we bent the G layer in, the H layer comes in uh, and has a bit of an angle here. So you'll want to make sure that this glues up flat to the G layer and then push this part of the frame into the G layer that is bent inward. Again, that just gives it a little contour so that this piece kind of flows inward. It was just kind of a nice little design touch, I thought. And as always, use the clamps where you see fit. No such thing as over clamping. So that'll set up for just a few, maybe a minute. So I'll give it a minute. Okay. Um, so on the opposite side, we're going to add the B, C, and D layers. And that's it for now. Because once we get B, C, and D backward, the backward B, C, and D in, um, we're going to start installing the steering system before we can put on the rest of the layers. Okay, the clamps are off in the H layer and we're going to flip it and we're going to start building the other side. Starting with, obviously, the B pieces. As normal, glue up the contact points, avoiding the dowel holes. The second part of B, the front end. Even though you've got a dowel registration mark, make sure the rest of the part adds up because you know you can get it on at any angle. But as long as you got your angle right, your parts will line up. Generally, all of your front end pieces are going to be flush. You especially want to make sure that all these parts are lined up because we're going to add uh, steering components into these parts and these parts really soon. Now for the backward C. Okay, before I forget, I want to point out that some parts may have these scorch marks from, from the laser. 
If that bothers you, then you could probably clean it off with some alcohol or with a light sanding. It'll come right off. Uh, otherwise, if you're going to paint it, it'll paint right over. Otherwise, it's not a big deal in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really easy to take care of if it bothers you. So now we're at part of the build where we're going to start installing the steering system. I misspoke earlier when I said we're going to do uh, the backward B, C, and D before we start adding the steering system, but uh, we only go to level C, so make, make a note of that or make sure you're following along in the, in the, uh, in the printed instructions. But um, here you'll see that if we covered up the, uh, the access slot with the D, uh, part then we're gonna have problems. So we're gonna go ahead and start installing the steering system now. Okay now we are going to assemble the steering system. You will need parts A4 and A3. You will need all of your R parts except for R3. Uh, R3 is actually the the uh, hitch so we'll go ahead and take care of that now. Uh, we're going to install this uh, upside down like so and then it's going to get glued in right here from the underside so it'll look like this so i'll go ahead and add glue here here and even on the back uh the back side of of the contact point right there okay letter side down someday i'll make some trailers for these models what do you think a plow a wagon I don't know. I'd like to hear what you have in mind in the comments. Okay, that should set up pretty quick. Okay, now, um, so we've got the R, R1, and R2. Those are your front end uh, parts of the axle for the, for the front end steering wheels. Uh, you've got your R6, and you've also got the circle parts that are unlabeled. Here you've got uh, the smallest the smallest piece with the uh, more or less square hole. That goes with R6. You'll see it fits right inside the R6 perfectly. Then R5 is the uh, uh, more rectangular uh, hole through the middle. That goes right inside R5. Then R4 doesn't have a full uh, circle cut out of it because it's bigger than the piece. Uh, you'll see it's matching uh, um, pivot point. It's not a full circle, it's just part of a circle with, uh, um, with a rectangle cut out and that goes right in there. So R4 is going to be installed right through here on the, uh, um, we'll call this the back. Um, the back point. Uh, so it goes, it goes in, assembled, and it doesn't matter if the uh, label is pointed forward or backward. So we'll just slide it right in to that notch here. And if your layers are all well aligned, and it should slide in right, no problem. But. In my case right now, there it goes, um, it was a little tight, which is okay. You're just going to have a stronger, uh, you're not going to have much play here, so it's good. Just push push past it, or if you need to, you'll have to get, get a knife out and, and uh, do some construction. Okay, um, or deconstruction, reconstruction, whatever. Modification. So. Uh, we've got this part is now uh, installed. The circle should be able to pivot freely. Notice we did not use any glue. Okay, so now we're going to take the A3 part. We're going to slip it in that notch on the circle. Like so. Actually, that way. Okay, should slide right in there. You'll see that this rotates side to side. Now we want to take, um, which is it? 
the R5 with the rectangular uh, access hole. And we're going to, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so slide the R5 and the circle piece in as best you can. As a matter of fact, let the circle come out. Put, okay, I'll get this. <laughs> it, it takes a little bit of uh, maneuvering, but uh, go ahead and slide the R5 in without the circle and then add the uh, uh, the exhaust system, which is your steering system, uh, into the circle, uh, the, the hole cut out, and then add your circle from behind. There, I got it. So now it all goes in as one assembly. Make sure it's all aligned aligned so it slides in okay and you want to make sure the whole assembly goes as far as it will uh, um, it will be allowed to <laughs> okay all right so it's looking like my uh, R5 piece, the back part, goes in farther than it's allowed to. So we want to make sure that the A5 piece is aligned with the A layer, which is the one with the steering column and the gear shift. So we want to make sure that that aligns all the way down the middle. So now you see we got it centered. Now what we might want to do is go ahead and add a little bit of glue to uh, the R5 piece. And you could even do it to the R6 piece if you want to. But yeah, just one, one more assurance that the uh, A5 piece is aligned with the A1 uh, and I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little drip of glue here so as not to uh, interfere with the pivot point circle. And we just want to lock it in place. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that to the front end too. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll set this down for a moment. And now we've got the A4. Uh, this is the piece that holds the front wheels and this is the part that actually turns left and right. Now, um, we've got the R, R1 and R2 pieces. You can see how the R1 and R2 fit together like so. Um, maybe I'll move the camera down. Okay. Probably much better. Okay, so you've got the R1 and the R2, and you've got the R, which is going to, uh, well, you'll see how it all goes together. But first, we've got the R6 and the circle with the small square, okay? That's going to go in right now. And again, it doesn't matter if the label points up or down, you'll never see it. So it slides in right here into this notch. Resistance there against something that uh, is probably due to alignment during construction. I can't see it though. Let's see. Go ahead and try again. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that's in. Let's see. 
There it is. Okay, that circle's not going anywhere. Now we're going to take the A4 piece, slide it in from the side, and then you can see where this is pointy. That's going to go right into the square of the pivot point circle. There we go. Now we've got our front end put in from the top. Um, again, this is you'll want this pivot point, you want this axle to be aligned uh, with the center, uh, the center layer, the A layer. So now we've got the R, R1, and R2 pieces. So first thing, take the R2, and we will put this uh, with the label side towards the body of the tractor. And that's gonna go ahead and slide from back to front like so. And then we're going to take the R1, put this body side towards the tractor, and here we're going to add glue around the edge. And we don't want to get glue inside of the circle because we need that to pivot freely. All right, so it's gonna go on from front to back. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's not gluing into anything here because these layers don't, uh, are not installed yet. Okay, so now that all of our parts are in place, we just have to add the uh, R2 piece. And again, that slides, uh, slots through from back to front around the front tractor tire axle pivot point. Okay, so it looks like so. And that's going to pivot amongst itself uh, between the R, uh, the R parts, R1 and R2. Uh, make sure you've got your top point of this tractor wheel in the uh, pivot point above, like so. Okay, so you will, now that you've got uh, the top part in and the R uh, pivot point in, hold a finger here just to keep it in place inside the R6 All right. and you want to put your pivot point in place we're going to glue this part to this part the A4 so R what is that piece R1 or no R2 R2 to the A4 without gluing a pivot point in place. So um, you want these two pieces only to be attached. So I'll leave kind of a super glue weld right there. You want that set up. Maybe you want to do the other side too. Just keep, keep your finger right there and don't let the, uh, the pivot point slip out of place. I want to point out here that you want to leave a slight gap between this part of the frame and the pivot arm of the front wheels. So kind of center that, uh, center this A4 piece between this gap here. Okay, now we're looking at the underside. Uh, we've got the R part, and this is a retainer that is going to hold the front wheel pivot point in place. Uh, it's gonna go 
uh, right on the front like so. Of course, we're looking at it upside down now. Um, so it's gonna go like that, and it's gonna prevent this, this wheel, uh, this pivot point from going out. All right, so we're going to add some glue right along the front edge. Maybe a little bit down the side. Very important not to get any on the pivot point. And this is going uh, label side in. Like so. Make sure everything's flush on the front side. There. Now at this point, you need to find a twist tie. I don't include it because everybody's got a twist tie laying around. But we're going to wire the A3 and A4 parts together and that's going to be what does the steering when you push the, uh, uh, <laughs> the exhaust pipe and the air breather uh, left and right is going to steer your tractor left and right. So uh, you'll see that the two holes in the A4 and the A3 part line up. Uh, just go ahead and wire those together. There it goes. And give it a few good twists. You want to get this good the first time because once it's all assembled, if it ever, if you ever have to replace it, it's a real pain to, to rewire. So I do my twisting from the, uh, what is it, the left side of the tractor. Because uh, as you can see on the finished model, there's an access panel here. Uh, and then you can access the rewiring if you ever need to. Okay. Um, So you don't want to get it overly tight that you're pulling the two parts together and out of alignment. Uh, just enough so that uh, the one part influences the other and allows for a pivot. Ta-da! And while we got the room to do it, we can go ahead and install the, the fan onto this little notch right here. Uh, just with a little dab of glue. Okay, I want to point out that this is another good time to let your glue fully cure when you're dealing with uh, that axle weld right there. Uh, just You just want to make sure that it's a good solid connection between the R2 and the A4 piece. Um, so now, uh, while we let that dry, we're going to go ahead and finish off the, um, the exhaust pipe and the, and the air dryer uh, or the air intake with the other B parts. So we got um, B5 and B4, reverse B5 and re reverse B4. So these are what are what we're, what we're talking about. We're going to glue these onto the, um, the parts here just to uh, go ahead and flesh those out. Um, and all of these parts will go on reverse so you won't be able to see the label. So first with the uh, B5 and B4 pieces. Um, so yeah, they go right, here, let me get this one, they go right here, just to make this thicker on both sides. Same with this little piece here. Okay, so in the end, these parts are going to be three layers. There, should look like that.
Okay, now that I'm confident that the glue is set up on the pivot point here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the reverse layers of, of D, G, E, F, D, D, E, F, G, and H, and then we'll get on to working on the uh, fenders and the axle for the back. See that? I just broke that that uh, thin part right there. It's not a big deal though. So I'm having a little trouble getting the uh, pivot point into the slot. So I'm just trying to force it. It's just barely off alignment. So. There we go. See that uh, that rear pivot point housing that we had to slide in through there uh, didn't quite line up with the slot here. Just because I'm having a problem with it now doesn't mean that you will be. Um, it all it all hinges off of how the initial sim assembly went. So um, yeah, don't let that discourage you. Just took a little finagling to get it through. All right, that was D, now we do E. Um, so if you recall when I put in the E on this side, I put glue in, but that's the inside of the armrest. So I gotta remember now not to do the inside of the armrest on this one. That one went on much smoother. And now F. And now G, and we're going to reverse it. So the G is on the inside. And this is the one where we got to squeeze um, squeeze the G layer to the reverse E layer, E, yeah. Alright. Adding the clamps back on. Again, here's the gap that we have to close with clamps. I go ahead and add a little bit more glue. Um, I already know that I've got plenty of dowel to work with for the rest of the uh, materials. As long as you've got a generally half and half, uh, you can go ahead and be a little sloppy at this point with the glue because we want to make sure we get a firm uh, bond with plenty of glue at this point. There we go. Okay, we're gonna be letting this glue set up properly. So I'm gonna come back in about a half hour and move on. All right, all good here. We've got the uh, G sides 
both the reverse G, the reverse G and the regular G pressed inward. And now we're ready to put on the H. And that concludes the front of the tractor. We got this open side here. If you find your G1, you can uh, install the access panel. It goes up underneath this little uh, little lip that the H piece on this side makes. And it goes down onto the dowel. There we go. Okay. Give this reverse H a little bit of clamping pressure. build the fenders. Okay, they should be already stacked up in to the reverse size side labels and regular side labels. Okay, you're gonna need, uh, well this is I, but I use a number one with a dot over the top to symbolize which is forward and which one, which one is reverse. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and lay out I, J, K, L, and your M will be reverse facing because it's an outside piece. And you've got this N piece, it's very small, and an O piece, which will be reverse. And each side also comes with two sets of short dowels. Okay, so we'll go right into, I'll do the regular side, label, letters, okay, so we'll start with I, and that goes on the left side of the tractor, like so. Okay, so where we start to build out the rear end of the tractor and ultimately we'll make the axle with these little pieces. There we go. And it's up to you. You can you can stack them one at a, one side at a time or do the whole side at one time. It doesn't matter. Okay, now with this first eye piece, you'll notice that it leaves a little gap right here where the G layer bends into the, um, what is it, the E layer, the G layer bends into the E layer. So you got a little gap here, no big deal. Okay, moving right along to the J layer. Okay, don't put glue on this part because it's going to be um, not attached to anything. We just don't want any glue stains there. Ah, I just broke my axle. Okay, darn it. It'll be okay though. Okay, so you see here there's it's uh, open face on this uh, fender. That's very frustrating. It's a lesson learned though. These things will break. All right, so since that happened, I'm gonna go ahead and try to build on the other side without breaking it off, breaking off the dowel. And 
J. The J, the reverse J has the clutch pedal thing on there. And the reverse K. Same thing, no glue on the open face of the fender. Now the regular side L. I'm going to go ahead and use my clamps here to make a stand because it's really awkward with the, the front wheel attachment there. With the M, I use the lower case M because the upper case M looks the same whether it's reverse or not. So the lower case M shows which side is a reverse letter and which side is the regular letter. Um, so with the regular letter, we're going on the inside face of assembly. Since this is the last piece of the main part of the fender, that goes facing inward. Okay, now we're left with three pieces of the fender with these two holes up top here. That's where our short dowels are going to go into. And as a matter of fact, you can go ahead and add some glue. And we're going to push through just a little bit. See how I pushed through the end? We're going to saw that off flush. And number two. There we go. Now we're taking the in piece, sliding that on over the dowels. Now at this point we're going to cut off the excess dowels up here because on the O piece it's got no holes in it and it's going to go uh, just over the top of the end piece to uh, make it look nice and finished. All right, so if you've got a flush cut saw, these are perfect. You've got a real fine kerf on it and they're really flexible and you can get really right up close to the uh, to the flush uh, part of the part. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and saw this off. This is not safe I'm doing it the way I'm doing it with my hand underneath, but I'm trying to keep it uh, braced and flip it around so I can at least try to be safe looking. Okay, so I've got the saw, I've got it flush right up against the fender and I pull. That's real easy. See how that looks nice? Perfectly flat. Okay, and I'll take the back piece off. Okay, and then I'll do the insides while I'm here. Come on. Sometimes that's just a push. Want it, you can get a piece of sandpaper and just finish it off real, real smooth. Okay, now that that's flushed off, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the labeled side. Get glue on my fingers, okay. and it's just a matter of lining it up. 
and align it perfectly with the end piece. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that whole process for the opposite side. Okay, we're about ready to start with the wheels, but before we do that, we have to finish out the axle, and that's when we just need these little these little rings here. There are eight of them. Um, it doesn't matter which side goes with which, even which way they're facing, uh, but I do like to keep it um, all consistent, all facing one way. So they've got labels on them. Uh, here's like in... 202p there's two p's here um but really the labels don't matter um there's eight of them four on each side so we'll go ahead and get those uh added on and you'll see exactly how they go it's pretty self-explanatory don't need a whole lot of glue on these all right so Keep building it right over the axle, or the uh, the dowel. Um, make sure that the the ring part is flush. You can really feel how the uh, how it all lines up. And you just kind of eyeball down the middle. Make sure that uh, there's no major uh, offsetting going on there. That's one. Okay, everything's aligned. Okay, at this time we need to go ahead and trim all of our dowels. Um, they're all going to be flush except for the uh, dowel that holds on the access panel for the uh, for the steering that just needs to be really short. In fact, just a little bit proud of the um, surface of this panel, but everything else needs to get cut flush. There's a the tractor body. We've just got two of these little accessories to add to the steering wheel and the clutch pedal. Again, these are not labeled, but uh, pretty obvious what they are. Okay, so when you add the steering wheel on, there it's a three spoke steering wheel. The single spoke points up. You'll see the uh, the square is not centered, so the the wide part of the clutch pedal goes outward, like so. I'll just leave that to dry, and then we start with uh, putting our tires together. Now with the tires here, we've got nine layers, um, all circles, but they've all got a very specific orientation of which they need to be glued together. So, first of all, the T9 is going to be reversed. And then um, we start with T4 and T5. And the 
the low number is the inside of the tractor wheel, while the high number is the outside of the tractor wheel. So T4 and T5 are the layers with the hubs on it. Um, so it's pretty simple. They get lined up in a manner where uh, the T4 hub uh, sticks out past the T5 borders of the hub. And at all times, of course, the center hole will need to stay aligned. So T4 and T5 is easy to align. Uh, you'll notice that the tread pattern is a little offset here. That's by design. Um, and then when we start stacking on the other layers, we'll have to talk about how the tread pattern aligns because that's the only thing we have to, to really aid us in how the uh, layers will be aligned. So we'll go ahead and uh, put glue on the back of T5. And align it just as I showed you. Incidentally, if you keep all the letters um, up to the top, then you'll be pretty close to where the tire layers need to be aligned. Okay. So make sure the twist is right and make sure the center hole is aligned. And you can feel around the edges that the layers match up pretty good on their border. Okay, now you can do T3 or T6 if you want. So I'll just go ahead and do T3. Okay, make sure it's aligned. So we know that T3 is an inside wheel. So if I face it to my right, then I know that this is the forward motion of the tire. And that's what matters. Um, so we are going to twist it along. To where the tire tread is equal with the T5 tire tread. Um, because we're going to be making a pattern of tread that is arrow shaped. Where T is the furthest forward piece of the uh, arrow, so the, the tip of the arrow. And while we're waiting, I'll tell you that the T2 and the T... Um, the T8 tread have, have skinny, skinny treads. Um, those are the outside most rings of the tire, which are not the small ones. So they're like the second to the last and second layers. And those will be centered on the treads before them. Okay, T1 is the inside part of the tire that goes on reverse. Actually, no, it goes on the same direction as all the other uh, layers, which is automatically reversed. <laughs> okay, on this one, you need to make sure it's aligned. as central as possible because the, the inside diameter does not match the inside diameter of all the other wheels. Here's a tractor that's already complete. Um, Obviously, this is a forward, so it's facing away from me. I've got a left wheel and a right wheel. So, you see the pattern here where this is T4, it is, uh, it is forming the point of this arrow of the tread. 
and all other layers fall away from that point on both sides. You got the outside, or the second to the last, and the number two uh, tire tread, which is different than all the other ones, and those just center on the treads before them. Okay, continuing on with T6 to the outside. You kind of have to eyeball how the uh, the tread is placed. One thing you can do is look at the back of one of these treads like this and make it equal with the tread with the front of the tread two treads away. So I don't know if that makes much sense to you, but uh, it really doesn't matter as long as you're making that general arrow or chevron sh shape. T7. And there you have it, a left tire. Now you want to be extra careful to make sure that you're not mixing your, your backward labeled parts, or your reverse, your reverse letter parts with the regular letter parts, because it matters. It matters, tire direction matters. Because they're completely opposite. All right, I'm going to put this on in clamps and I will go ahead and do all the reverse letter layers. And now that both wheels are assembled, we'll now use this time to go ahead and assemble the axles. So we need the X parts, X1, 2, 3, and X. You'll also need these unmarked hub pieces, as well as these rings, which are the bearings on the inside. Okay, so, so now that our rear wheels are assembled, we will go for the axle assembly, We'll need our X parts, X1, 2, 3, and X. We'll also need these hubs and these T3 labeled uh, rings, which are gonna be the bearings on the inside of the wheel. So first thing we'll do is grab our X1 part, and it slides in through the uh, axle assembly. You see there's a thin slot that this slides through straight up and down and it does not get to spin. Okay, then we'll take the X2 or X3 part, it doesn't matter, and slide it through the slots of the X1. And same thing over here with the X3. Okay, um, that will have some play in it, but we will address that shortly. Now we're gonna take the T3 parts None of this is using any glue, by the way. Slide it over the top of your X assembly, like so. And then we're gonna take one of the tires 
Uh, make sure you got the correct wheel that has the tread facing the proper direction with the middle uh, layer being the tip of the arrow going forward. So this is the left wheel. We'll slide it in through the axle or through the hub. And now we need two of these parts. And this is where we're going to apply glue to only the inner part of the uh, of the X. We don't. Oh, that's too much. We don't want to get this glued to the hub of the wheel at all. Like so, and then this piece will get glue all over the, um, the face here and the interior of the X. It's going to go right on top of that. So, stacking two of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. we want the, the axle assembly to be flush with that mm -hmm. second piece of the hub. Without gluing your finger to it. <laughs> okay. okay. Before it dries, you want to get the hub cap. And on the label side, we want to glue that. covered. Place it right over the top. Okay, you want to put pressure on the other end of the axle against the hubcap so it dries flush. Occasionally, just to make sure that any glue that did, did get on it from the uh, hub assembly doesn't dry mm -hmm. and breaks as it does secure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to make sure this sets up pretty good. And it's okay mm -hmm. to push this through a little bit so there's no contact with your uh, with the rim of your wheel. Mm -hmm. So we just want to get those three hubcap pieces glued to the axle. Because when we set up when we when we glue the other wheel to it, we're taking away all the tolerance so we won't have any wobble in our back wheels. So, go ahead and add that now. Same thing as before. We want to push that pretty tight to take out the play in the tires. Okay. Well, we got that in place. Go ahead and add the second hub. Make sure you're turning your wheels throughout the drying process. Mm -hmm. 
almost done. So now we've got the Q parts. You've got the dual wheels in the front. That's four parts of the tire. You've got the axle assembly and the hubcaps. So we're going to start with Q1, stack Q2, Q3, and then Q4 is going to be glued on in reverse. And then each wheel gets its own side. Matter of fact, there. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now I went ahead and assembled one wheel. Um, one thing I need to correct myself on is the Q3 will go on backwards or, or reverse as so as to hide the Q3 label. So Q1, Q2 is pretty simple. Uh, it aligns, you've got the, uh, the spokes that align perfectly. And what you're gonna have is uh, an uneven wheel pattern, or une uneven levels on each layer to represent the tread of the directional wheels. Using your fingers, you can line the edges of the wheel. And now we're on to the last step where we assemble the front tires. Okay, so we're going to put the two axle pieces together and add one hub. Unlike the rear tires, the difference is we're going to put these two wheels on uh, completely solid and what spins is the axle spins inside the, uh, the axle hole here. So I've got glue on, the, on one hub. I want to get that set up a little bit before I put it onto a wheel. Just right there where the curve ends, I'm, I'm putting the hub on. So you see the, the, the axle assembly is curved. So right there at the end of the curve, I'm adding the hub. Okay, I'll go ahead, put a little bit of glue around the central hub of the wheel. Add this. Okay. Now, add glue to this hub. Put it on the face and in the inside of the cross. And we let it dry. Put, put some pressure uh, against the hubs. The hubs are the circles with the cross in it. We don't want to get much wobble in the front wheels. So that's why we're adding pressure 
as it dries. If you're still with me, I am amazed because that is by far the longest video I've ever done. Uh, but it's okay because it was a step-by-step -step process to get this kit completed. Hopefully you found it useful. If you're one of my customers that purchased this product, then thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you are still watching and not yet a customer, then probably you're convinced to go ahead and get this for yourself. The link is in the description. I encourage you to go ahead and browse through my channel. If you like what you see, then do me a favor and subscribe and like a couple videos.